Good morning and welcome to St. James's on this fourth Sunday of Easter. Our service of Holy Eucharist Rite 2 begins with the opening acclamation on page 355 in your Book of Common Prayer or in your bulletin. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first level of God. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him and he abides in them. And by this, we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Everybody loves Jesus the Good Shepherd. We love seeing him in stained glass windows or depicted in beautiful mosaics in churches. We love to recite the 23rd Psalm with its message of comfort. And many of us have our favorite renditions of that psalm in music from the evocative chant written by Bobby McFerrin for his mother to the lush choral version by Howard Goodall that I thought everyone knew as the theme of the Vicar of Dibley TV series, but I've learned that only us BBC nerds know what that is. Then there's Bach's lovely aria, Sheep May Safely Graze, which we often hear at weddings to encourage us to live without fear although it was written to be a birthday song. So on this Good Shepherd Sunday, it's lovely to reflect on Jesus, the Good Shepherd who cares for the sheep and watches over them. I know how important that can be, especially in hard times, to feel that a loving someone is watching over us. But everybody doesn't love sheep or at least not everyone loves the idea of being a sheep. The rap sheet on sheep is that they are dumb, they get lost a lot, they don't think for themselves, and they're very smelly. And I can attest to that last one because when I was growing up out in the country, I had, we had another family that had a sheep farm and I used to go over there to play with the other farm children. And when I got home, my mom made me take off all my clothes in the garage, put them directly into the washing machine before I came into the house. Sheep are definitely smelly. And they have this bad reputation as being simple-minded, passive, prone to wander off and get in trouble. That actually sounds a little like us. One of our confessions in our prayer book starts off with us admitting to God that we have all erred and strayed from God's ways like lost sheep. So sheep are pretty from afar in churches or in the green fields of the British Isles and they're cute up close in the Christmas pageant and lovely to sing about at any time, but nobody actually wants to be compared to sheep. But if Jesus is the good shepherd, <laughs> then there have to be sheep. He's not the good shepherd in a vacuum. 
He didn't lay down his life for nothing. He laid it down for the sheep. Remember that Christ died for you, we say, at communion. And so, like it or not, we are the sheep. And as it turns out, despite the fact that people don't think this, sheep are actually quite emotionally complex according to people who know these kinds of things. They're intelligent animals. They form deep, lasting bonds with each other. And they can remember a number of people faces and even more sheep faces for years and years. They stick up for each other in fights. And they grieve when they lose a friend. They're playful and curious, and perhaps more importantly, they stick together against predators. They're calmer and less stressed when accompanied by fellow sheep, even in worrisome situations. Bet you didn't know that. They form strongly bonded social groups. They learn from each other, and they know themselves to be interdependent. And they do depend on their shepherd, not for everything, but for when trouble is near. So actually, we ought to want to be more like sheep. We humans are inter interdependent too, but lots of us don't want to know that, much less be that. Society does not heap praise among people who know themselves to be interdependent. Our founding myth is of the strong, silent, lone ranger, self-made person who doesn't need anybody and would rather consider interdependence too close to dependence and thus a weakness. We don't really want to depend on God. We don't really want to depend on anyone. Maybe because we've been let down hurt, been worse than hurt by people who were supposed to care for us. Maybe we prayed for something that didn't turn out like we wanted it to. So we would rather engineer our own lives and plot out every waypoint to reach our goals. We would rather be self-reliant than interdependent. We would rather be self-centered than other-centered. We would rather not to have to give anything up for anyone else. But Christians are called to be different in a world that is full of hired hands who do not actually care for those they are charged with shepherding. And Christians, as much as anyone else, are indeed prone to wander off and get lost. We do need a shepherd. We do need to learn that we are interdependent. We do need to learn that, or we need to learn how to be there for others, to consider ourselves part of the flock instead of striving to become masters of the universe. Giving ourselves away for others is what it means to be like Jesus the one we try to follow. Now, that said, I want to say it's important that giving ourselves away and seeing ourselves as interdependent does not mean that we allow ourselves to be abused or misused or taken advantage of out of some misplaced sense that we have to do that in order to be loved or in order to be Christians. It is not okay to insist that the Christian thing to do is to stay in an abusive relationship or to submit to manipulation. We're still supposed to be wise, even as we are peaceful. Jesus said that he came so that we would have life and have it abundantly, that he came to set the captives free, including people who take us into captivity and wish to wield power over us for their own gratification. There are limits. 
But all we like sheep have gone astray, do go astray. I certainly have. And my soul has needed re reviving plenty of times, and maybe yours has too. But I have been saved by knowing that I belong to the Good Shepherd and the Good Shepherd's flock of smart and silly sheep who ultimately do come to know that we all need each other. We are one flock, and there is one shepherd. And whatever kind of sheep we may be, we are loved. Thanks be to God. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten Father, God from God. Hallelujah. What was dead shall live, what was dark shall shine, what was forgotten shall be remembered. For the Lord is risen and walks among us. Let us confidently bring before God the needs of all our world, asking God for renewal, saying, Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed. God of life, in gratitude and great joy, we laud you for the gifts of Christ's resurrection. Give us hope, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. For all who have need of the gift of Easter, for all who journey from illness to health, from despair to hope, from grief to consolation, from loneliness to love, for all our brothers and sisters, that death may have no more power over us, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. For all who suffer and all who mourn, that you will wipe away all tears, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. May we have the persistent faith of Mary Magdalene and the surprised belief of Peter and John. May we long to be your sign of life in our world, for Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. May we be one in faith for all who have died in Christ, for Christ is risen. 
Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. We pray for all in our congregation who are grieving and in need of care, as well as those who provide care to the grieving and those in need, especially our Stephen ministers. Please join me in lifting up to God those who are sick or in need and who have asked for our prayers. Rob, Tom, Tom Jeff, Monkey, Jeanette, Allie and Bill, Courtney, Sandra, the St. Joseph's family in Haiti, Donna, Patrick, Will, Landon, Moody, Jim, Ruth, Farrell, Nina, Jan, Janet, Mary, and Rebecca. God of life, we thank you for the mystery planted in us the paradox of life from death and community from scattered disciples. We praise you for the dying which saves us from death and for the rising which brings us life. We pray as we live through Jesus the risen one in the power of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have done them. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we will come to repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Good morning and welcome to all of you. It's so good to see you here. I was worried nobody was going to come. <laughs> oh, rainy day. Um, but it is, it's, a, it's a busy day here. We've already done two or three things already and we've got more to do. There's a, uh, in, in, the, in your bulletin, uh, all of the things are listed. First of all, that we've got, well, no, it's, it's, a, it's not in this one, is it? Um, sorry, it's not. Um, Peter Paul Gardening is happening today, and also um, this afternoon at 5 o'clock we have Evensong, a special Evensong uh, commemorating or celebrating Earth Day, which is tomorrow, um, and Kristen Wickersham, who some of you know um, from this parish, is going to be the guest preacher, so hope that you can come back for that as well. There are all kinds of things that are going on during this Easter season as we move toward Pentecost on the 19th, um, which is also going to be another big day. The bishop will be here that morning for confirmations, and then we will have the parish picnic that afternoon at Rock Bottom, as always. So um, please do RSPP for that, because we're asking folks to, to um, bring a side dish, and we need to know who's coming and all that. So please check your e-chimes. Uh, the website, all of the ways that you keep up with us to keep up with us. So, welcome again. We're glad that you're here. Let us continually offer to God the sacrifice of praise, that is, the fruit of lips which acknowledge His name. But do not neglect to do good and share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death, he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O oh God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with blessed James and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
gift of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Please stand or kneel as we pray our post-communion prayer together. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of the Lord's Congregation of the Church of Christ. And you have led us. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love us and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand for the blessing. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.